Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Eli Horowitz, director of PR with Sparks. Thank you so much for coming. This is a great turnout. It's going to be an amazing season for the Sparks. Uh, first up, we have our executive vice president, general manager, Andy Toller, our head coach, Derek Fisher. Uh, when you have a question, raise your hand and make eye contact with me, and I'll give you a cue that you're next. And please state your name and your affiliation. Get started. Um, yes, no, I think, um, you know, having experiences in, in New York. an opportunity to work within a, a sports organization, um, you know, you get, a, you get a handle for, you know, how to build relationships amongst players, coaches, staff, for an office, and all those things are important. Uh, and so having this opportunity now here at Sparks, um, I'm better off having been in New York, um, regardless of the length, uh, because the experience is really what, um, you know, has, has helped me to step into this role more prepared uh, and, and more ready to kind of handle you know, anything that comes up. Um, yeah, for my first Christmas game that we're, we're working in progress like we should be. Um, we learned a lot about ourselves in terms of what we can do even this early when we do things the way we practice them and, um, and then when things don't go as well and you get away from just the basic fundamentals of playing the game the right way, um, you get into trouble. So just having that experience of being out on the road, um, you know, playing in a close game, you're up seven, you know, in the third quarter or maybe early in the fourth and then bad possessions, poor shot selection, momentum changes, uh, and, and you lose the game. And even though in the preseason you're not overly concerned with a win or a loss, uh, it's, it's great teaching and, and it's a great opportunity to learn um, as a group, you know, how to better manage specific situations. And so from that perspective, um, I thought we got out of Friday night, or Saturday night, excuse me, um, exactly what we needed to. Um, I think it's a combination of both. I, I do think that for many years, uh, NBA players um, supported the game and fans of it, fans of the individual players uh, that play on the women's side. Um, that's where my um, first, I think, connections and touch points with the Sparks began. Uh, as a fan, as a former player, going to the game, supporting the team. Um, you know, it was only a couple of years ago, Penny was out there playing, you know, doing her game. <laughs> So, you know, um, I think uh, several players genuinely respect and appreciate the talent that these women possess. And, and so, yeah, I think that social media and players having an individual platform to express that appreciation is what has helped to try and elevate it a little bit more. Um, before, guys were relying upon trying to force it into an interview about something else speak about their appreciation for the WNBA. And now I'm going to just go on Instagram or on Twitter and just say it himself. Um, and I think that's a good thing. And, you know, man or woman, we all have an obligation to continue to elevate and make sure that, um, that women and women in business and sports continue to get opportunities. Yeah, I'm
of the off season. Obviously, we started with our, you know, Coach Richard over here and the staff. I look around and there's so many uh, new faces. Um, I'm actually delighted to see them because every team, every now and then, needs an energy boost. Uh, you call it a blood transfusion, and it's been a great transfusion. So we started with getting an amazing coaching staff, Derek, Patricia, and Fred Williams. Um, I think they're going to do an amazing job. And then, you know, we didn't win last year. And every team is different every year. And we have a lot of new faces on this team. As you can look around, we have some here and some that are not. Um, what do we have? Let me start with, I guess, Shanae Gomeke, since she was the last one added to the team. I think she's going to be, I mean, she's dynamic in her own right. You know, her and Neko Gomeke are the only siblings besides Eli and Big Benny. The go number one. And both, both, I mean, look at both of them, rookie of the year. Both of them, I think she's going to be a great addition to the team. I think the evolution of Vadiva and Vadiva coming back, and they can, I think she's going to be amazing. Let's see, we got so many girls on the team. Let me, let me see. <laughs> let me see who else. Okay, we have Vera Pova, who, who elected to stay home. Uh, you know, Mecca, Candace, you know, Chelsea's on the way back. You know, all those are great players. Elena here, defensive player of the year. Uh, Alexis Jones, I just got her. I'm really looking forward to seeing what she can do. Uh, Kalani Brown, you know, I was actually amazed that Kalani was there in the draft. That was pretty shocking. So it's nice to have your home center at 6'7". <laughs> you know, one that's young, one that's vibrant. And I think Kalani, I was telling Kalani the other day, She's really our only two five that we ever had. At least last day, Tampa Parker are not two fives. We've never been blessed to have a true five. So Kalani is the first. So I'm just super, super excited. And she's an amazing person. You, when you meet her, you'll see her energy is just like infectious. And uh, let me see who else we got on the There's a whole bunch of them here. I don't want to leave anybody out. Cindy Weiss is back. Carly Samson. You know, that's, my, that's our class sister. Like that's his last buddy, brother, and then she is on my Maven, Maven, Marina Maven. So we have our own version of the Splash Brothers here on the team between Sydney Weiss, Charlie Samson, and Marina Maven. Okay, I gotta hope we have a whole bunch of players. I'm hoping not leaving anybody else out because everybody is important. Oh yeah, Axie Walker. Oh my God, Axie has been killing. Did you see her in the first preseason game? Um, Ashley, I'm actually proud of Ashley too because Ashley is someone who tried to make the league for years and she's a testament to she didn't give up, she went overseas, she got better and, and now look at the final product from Ashley and Ashley's been doing just an amazing job in training camp. So we have a host of talented players. Um, obviously, I mean, we're going to have to put decisions to make, but I'm happy with what's here in camp and what's on the way. Brady Hubbard, can you talk through the Sinead trade, how that went down, what you saw, what you thought was important for this roster? And Derek, if you could talk about how it's going to be for you and how it's going to be for you. Well, for me, it's quite simple. We have one of them, okay, who goes one speed, 100. <laughs> so they have two, that's 200. <laughs> so, I mean, they're going to if you watch them in college at Stanford, they were a hell of a duel. So it was a no-brainer when the opportunity presented itself and we had an opportunity to bring Shanet. You know, if they were good once, it's going to be twice as good here in Los Angeles. Now, I'm, I'm not even, it's like when I wake up and I think about it, I can't wait to see them on the floor with each other, just seeing a glimpse in practice. And like I said, their energy, they know one speed, a hundred. And when you see them running around out there, it's, it's, it's beautiful to watch. So now, obviously, it's going to be a process. And it's not going to happen overnight. I don't want to put that pressure on them because there are other players on the floor. But I'm not going to lie to you. It looks real good with some damn going to get a kid's heart. <laughs> you know, and then this is the Kalani and Chelsea and Elaine and all that. So the opportunity to present itself, we count them. And let's hope that in the end, it leads to a championship. Um, yeah, yeah, the second. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I think in terms of like how we end up starting the season with a 
of starting a lockout. Um, honestly, it would probably be fluid to start with because we're so fortunate to have so many good players. Um, and for me, getting accustomed to in the WNBA, uh, the fluidity of you know players still returning from overseas that are potential starters in their lineup. Um, or if someone has a national team commitment, they may have to leave for a couple weeks and come back. So you're constantly kind of managing and shuffling um, your roster. Um, and so you have to be able to adjust and adapt. And I think we're fortunate enough and will be at least to, if we want to start really big, uh, we can have Kalani in the middle, or Maria Lima in the middle. Um, Johnson Labrador can still be in the middle. We also have um, an ability to go still big, but, but really versatile with Nega, um, Candice, and Shanae uh, in the front court as well. So we'll be able to do what is best for the team, and that's really what every decision will kind of be based on. And the great part about the women on this roster is that they're committed to that. They've won championships before, they want to win again, um, and everybody here is, is bought into that. Uh, so the conversation will be difficult to have in terms of who starts and who comes off the bench. They just want to play and be successful. Kind of on that, um, this is, you guys have a lot of new pieces, but you have a wonderful core that's coming back. How important is it to have these those group of girl, women, Elena and Candice, and that kind of play together, and you know, kind of have that, so that, it, that solid base. It's very, it's very important. I always say, you know, it's just like a house. You always have to have a foundation. You know, Chelsea, Nega, Candace, Elena, Gentile, you know, they've been together for a while. And it's awesome to have them because they know what the culture is, they know what practice is supposed to be like, they know what the expectation is, you know, they understand the pressure of playing here in Los Angeles and what it's going to take to win. Because good or bad, in LA, we're the team that always have to talk on our back. We're going to get everybody's best. So I think before you even build a house, there's a foundation. And all the players that we bring in, the Divas, the Kamanis, the Snays, the Lexus, Ashley, and all these group of other players, they're, they're complimenting those. Because we do, the team is built around them. So we look at who's going to go with them, who's going to play well with them. And it's sort of just like what Coach Pitcher said in the preseason game. When I was sitting in the stands out there watching, and Coach Fisher put Baker in, and a lady said, do you think that's normal for him to play her this early? And I just happened here, and I said, of course it is. She said, but look at all the stars you have. I said, we already know what they can do. We're trying to see what everybody else can do, and how their piece of the puzzle is going to fit. So it's awesome to have a core that's been there, done that. All that core has a championship ring. And now that you bring it up, the rest know. They're, the core is the only piece the only players on the team that have to And they're like Elena, you're not gonna find better leaders than Elena, Candace, Napa, you know, none of them. You know, and so they they help us now, but they also help the young players, Kamani, Alexis, these players, Chelsea, understand what it's like to be a Los Angeles Sparks. Because we're not your average show, never will be. So it's one of those things where they just pass down the tradition. And anybody that comes here in LA, my first piece is don't shy away from the pressure. No, we want to be the champions. Relish it, understand it, and understand that it won't happen overnight, but it's a process. But, you know, they're the foundation answer the question. Sabrina, what's your Just going back to actually watching for a second, how long have you had an eye on her? What was it about this time and what made it like it? You know, actually, actually, it's not her first sit around the Sparks. It's her first time in camp. So I actually known Ashley for a while. I always thought Ashley was a good player. And unfortunately, there's only 12 teams. So believe it or not, a lot of good players get cut. And they may not pitch your team this year, but you watch them. The players just want to continue to develop. And I think any good GM or coach, if you're doing your homework, you understand that they may not fit this team. But you want to watch and see if they go be better. And Ashley has gotten better every every single year, time after time after time. And I wasn't surprised that she played well the other day. Um, she's been doing it in practice the whole time. And it, it's a testament to what I like to say with players is you can't get to the game and turn it on. She actually is doing well in practice and is showing in the game. So I've been watching Ashley.
Jim since she came out of college. She's polished. She's a lot more polished now. Her jump shot is a lot better. She didn't have the rings that she has now. And even her ball handling has improved. So you follow players. Just because they get cut or don't make the league, you still follow these players to their maturation. And then when the time comes, if they're perfect for that team, then you go and you put them in the camp and you have them to fight for a spot. And that's just doing very, very well. Off um, well, to me, defense, you know, is, is about mindset um, and a commitment to communicating with each other in a way that allows you to solve problems. You know, offense is the most popular side of the basketball these days. Um, everybody's concerned about pace and analytics and you know, what kind of shots you're getting, etc. And defense is kind of taking a little bit of a back seat and it doesn't really come up until it actually matters. So, um, you know, we're trying to build our defensive foundation right from the beginning. You know, our first two days of practice were primarily about defense. Um, so just having the mindset that, you know, you have to be committed on that end. And because of the talent we have, uh, at times we're, we're going to fall into the trap of thinking that we can just outscore or outplay people uh, offensively. And, and we'll still need to be elite on the defensive end. One area defensively that, that really jumps out for us would be our rebounding. Um, you know, we've been in the, in the bottom of the league on that end of the floor the last couple of years. Able to get away with it and still have some success, but I think it will elevate our team if we can become an elite rebounding team, um, which is where drafting the money down makes sense. And that should, should make the game make sense because if we can secure defensive possessions with rebounds, and now you get out into the open floor with the versatility in our roster, um, I think we become more efficient offensively um, as well. So it's an important end for us, and we, we, we have to be. I just want to add one more thing to Derek and I have a basketball player. And when you speak of defense, um, tear of the press. You know, it's just like having two elite beards. So adding her to the team was, I think, a, a great addition because you all can have a on the next <laughs> So you're not going to always be here without the form, but that's just an easy one when you got tear of the press. Or you gotta have someone that's been in the league 
very, very familiar with the name. Um, I can truly say this, I've been impressed with your knowledge of all the college players where he's up to speed. One day I was coming on the name and he threw it out. <laughs> you know so my familiarity with Derek, the thing I like about him is he's fresh, he's new, and contrary to what a lot of people say, is I'm not on the court. I need someone that's going to get along with the girls. You know, I think his personality, his passion for the game is going to be great for the girls. And being a female myself, it's going to be awesome to have a coach to listen to. But you know, as women, we got to have somebody to listen to us. We're like the law. You know? And it's more than less than, you know, I don't want to forget this either. And it's by the championship rings don't hurt either. So all those things and his knowledge of the game, I think if I, he's a hard worker because look at him with the Lakers and North Carolina. He made himself better by his whole his work ethic. And that's the type of work ethic you need to win a championship. So I think when I thought about who the coach is team and everybody didn't you know, I took a lot of flack because I didn't consider anybody. But I like to say I've been here for what? The Sparks always listen. So I don't have to guess or I don't like to waste people time. He's got the job. It's different. I love the fact that he's only been in men's basketball. What I mean by that is his eyes are fresh. You know, he coaches a different style. And as a GM, I'm telling you, he is, and this is a selfish one I'm about to tell you. As a GM, he gives me a lot of flexibility because I've had, I have had coaches that I have to pick players that will help them be successful. Where with Derek, I can pretty much pick anybody. And I believe he can coach you. And for a GM, that's a luxury. But you can go out and be like, oh, give me this one to get out the boat, that's close to a wedding and you may not go in their system and stuff like that. Because I do believe that you have to pick the coaches and players according to the coach, not just because I'm the GM and what I say. Because I want to give them the best opportunity to be successful. His success and the player's success equal the organization's success. So fresh, new, energized, upbeat, positive. Um, I think it, the girls, he will listen to their feedback and not be offended. And like I said, his eyes are fresh. He's not a V-trade coach. And I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. Um, two more. Yeah. 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 Um, it says a lot. It's, it says a lot. Um, success in team sports requires that level of selflessness. And when you have someone that was an all-star year, willing to step into a, a new environment, um, you know, where she could want to, you know, shine more and be on a bigger stage, um, being open to and willing to do whatever the team needs in order to be successful. Um, and it says a lot about who she is. As Penny mentioned earlier, the character of, of who she is, uh, that is their family, um, what they mean and what they represent, um, that's great to have. And, you know, character and integrity, um, you know, those are the building blocks of, of leadership. And both Shanae and Neca provide great leadership for us. And, um, so, yeah, I think it says a lot about her. We're, we're very fortunate to have someone as talented as her with that type of mentality. And then I want to add to that. Think about it. You have um, as good and as talented as Neca and Sinead is. It's very rare in most instances, and when I say that about star players, they're blue collar workers. You know what I'm saying? They, they would do the dirty work without even action. They don't look at their star power as, I'm a star, and I'm only here to shine. They will do whatever it takes, and, and I mean, in a team setting, a team to win is usually the players who throw the sacrifice. In order to win games, they will do whatever it takes to win. Even if they've been walking through, they will be back, they will grab them off. Because they are those, they are those like, that's their character. Tell us what to do, and they go do it. Last question, back um, For Penny, um, you know, yesterday you claimed uh, Sierra Dillard off waivers. Um, you know, she was one of the most explosive scorers in college basketball last year. But, you know, what was it about her, you know, that, that you saw that you wanted to take that chance on her? Um, it's about, you know, I, I mean, I think she's a very good player. You know, I think she's a very good player. And 
ones that uh, she can do the water thing, she can play the water, she can play the two. I wanted to see what she would look like with the players that we have here. Uh, obviously, she got, I was a little surprised when she got away, but I understand because they're guard heavy. And I wanted to come, I wanted to bring her in, and it's still about new talent. It's still about building that roster, you know, as a GM. This 2019 team is pretty much set. You know, it's a GM job to look at 20, 21, 22. And those, believe it or not, that's the team that I'm trying to put together right now, even though it's 2019, 19. And I thought she would be a, a nice addition to the team and come in and see what, we can, see what she can do. So I'm anxious to see how she's going to flow with what we already have here. And as they say, it never hurts to have competition. <laughs> So basically, yes, yeah, I'm excited about it.
lot, not just because of who he is and the path that he's forged, but also someone with his credentials, obviously, um, to come in and buy into women in sports. I think that's kind of what's most important. And with him came the acumen that he has brought in with his staff as well. Um, obviously, Penny has done an amazing job of kind of configuring this team this year. Um, we've seen, we see a lot of changes, uh, but I think Derek is he's kind of the, what we feel like, it might feel like it's like the missing piece to us putting, rebuilding the team um, after experiencing a lot of changes. And for us to kind of have that, uh, I guess you could say it's, it's a bit of a portal between men's and women's sports. Um, that's what I take away mostly from him being the coach. We, we've had a great couple of weeks here so far, and I look forward to seeing, you know, this philosophy kind of uh, exemplified through us on the court. And for me, for Coach Fish, like, it's just funny, because I was just thinking about it, and it, you know, as you guys get to know me, I'm kind of an older book, just like that. And I was like, it's kind of weird, because you look at Coach Fish and you think, like, oh, there's Coach Fish. Good mixture of a veteran, but the new, to come here to a team. 
Talk about what Coach Fisher is doing now to really acclimate you, not only on the court, but to bond you and get you ready for the whole season. I, mean, I, I can speak from experience because um, he, he's kind of, he's, he's, he stepped to us on the first day with a personal story of his that I thought really set him apart as a coach. Um, I can give you a couple examples. He's talked to us about Kaizen. <laughs> he talks to us about how he wants us to be engaged. But more specifically, what I really like that he does is that he allows us as teammates and players to hold each other accountable. Yeah, um, he steps in when he needs to, but he kind of gives us the reins as far as um, kind of coaching each other through certain situations, you know? And I appreciate that. I think that's always been a weakness of our team. Um, and it's, it's really great to see a coach that trusts in the, in the veterans uh, in that way. So um, I think we're going to be doing a lot of learning from each other, but of each other as well that will kind of really keep us on as tightly as we can be. Yeah.
what kind of player she is. So um, to have her on the team and to know that she's going to try her best, it's no surprise to me. LT Williams TG Sports. When I first heard that she was coming, a tear rolled down my eye. Really? I realized a lot more was going to really be crazy. Okay. First of all, welcome. And this question, you know, a lot of times we know, it's easy for us to say, well, you know, they need this, they need that. But I'm asking you guys to play a point of view, especially you. You've been with this team for a long time. Do you feel now that the team that's been assembled for training and help, first of all, is probably one of the best you guys have in a long time? That's the first question. A lot of teams, uh, and there have been instances where we thought we had everything, and it didn't pan out that way. Um, what was it? Was it last year, the year before? The year before last, I think. It was last year. Uh, we started with eight players, and <laughs> we went on to beat Minnesota for the first game of the season. You know, and it's really hard to to say whether or not a team is exactly what you think we need, but. I can tell you how I feel. And when I walk into training camp every day, when I'm engaging with my teammates, with the new staff, it feels good. It feels different. Um, there's a buzz that I hadn't felt before, at least in a long time, at least since I would say maybe 2016 for my teammates, that I feel now again. Um, and it's, it's almost more so now with the staff that we now have put together. I think that uh, Penny's done an amazing job of really putting together a staff that can support us in a way that we not only deserve, but also need. Um, so I think, yeah, you might be on to something as far as the, the, the team we put together this year. I think this year's going to be really exciting. Okay. And Ms. Adams, you've been keeping up with all the draft picks from all the game and everything, and you with this team. What are your opinion about the talent pool as this year's WBA? The talent pool of this WBA? Yes, yeah, season Like everybody? I think that every year the WBA gets better and better. And it's harder and harder to get a job and keep a job, which means that the league is at its healthiest. If you look, and this is the analyst going to whatever, but if you look at every key metric for our game, whether it's merchandise sales, streaming revenue, um, social media clicks, everything's exploding. Our game is doing so well, and it's about time, you know, that everyone else is recognizing it, right? We are the best women's basketball players in the world. Only 144 make the WNBA, which is why our league is so healthy. Um, so yeah, I mean, I know they're, they're like that can spoke to like there's a buzz, we're excited about our team, but I think it's anybody's ball game at any time because you never know who's going to emerge. The beauty of our game is that a lot of players go overseas and they get better. A lot of players also stay here and they find balance. People are bringing a lot of great things to the table. Younger talent are getting more personal than ever. So like, people aren't waiting for their moments, they're taking their moments, whether it's a rookie or it's a vet, right? So it's a really special time. And I think this year, more so than ever, it's anybody's opportunity. And I'm glad to be here because I feel like we can definitely see some Ashley Walker specifically? Just a, a player like her? Well, I mean, you're speaking specifically about Ashley, you know, I, I played against her when I was a freshman in Stanford. Um, I knew how great she was back then. Um, and you think about playing against people like that when you enter uh, the professional realm. Um, but to speak on a player like her, um, I don't think that you can teach character. You know, and that type of character is what keeps someone coming back every time, whether she makes a team or not. Um, she's killing overseas, obviously. There's plenty of players that are over there killing overseas. But a player like Ashley, you know, she doesn't let getting cut or not making a team phase her. She comes in and she does her best. We saw against Phoenix, she, had, she was a leading scorer. You know, she comes in with a great attitude. And those are the only types of players that really survive, you know. Um, especially with this younger generation. It's all about social media. All about social media. And people, yeah, people forget, people forget the realness of it all, you know? Um, the passion, being in the moment, 
presently, just presently attending to what you're doing. And I think Ash is a perfect example of the types of players that do end up surviving in the loop. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see everybody. Okay, guys.